My name is Rebecca Groves. I'm 24 years old and I have multiple sclerosis. I'm the founder of the new patient, families and friends group at For Life on Earth and I invite you to join me on this brief journey through the history of modern medical research. The scientific evidence is provided by the leading experts who specialise in up-to-date understanding of the critical effects evolutionary biology and complexity science have for medical research. This is best illustrated by a seminal work published in 2009 called Animal Models in Light of Evolution. All the scientific evidence in this film is objectively verifiable and I invite you to please check out our references for yourself. Listed in full at the close of this film and on our website. We are beginning our time travels in the year 1847. It was then that French physician Claude Bernard introduced as an institution the use of experimenting on animals on the unfounded assumption that animals are able to predict medical responses for humans. Bernard believed that if human medicine was to become truly scientific, it would have to be based on rigorous and controlled animal experiments. Although Bernard instituted a method that is still practised today, he went on to reject the theory of evolution. Concentrating on non-human animals, Bernard also minimalised the role of clinical human medicine as well as studies measuring the frequency and causes of disease in different groups of people. Furthermore, Bernard actually stated that experiments on non-human animals were, and I quote, entirely conclusive for the toxicology and hygiene of man. I should explain that toxicology is the study of the adverse effects of chemicals on living organisms, and to date, 95% of all experiments on beagle dogs and non-human primates are still for such toxicology experiments. As we continue our time travel through the late 19th and early 20th centuries, beyond the use of animal experiments, we can delight in science as it brings us groundbreaking theories which help humanity make sense of the physical universe in so many practical ways. The scientists Jenner, Snow, Lister and Semmelweis all contributed to the germ theory of disease. In 1859, Darwin published the theory of evolution and in 1905, Einstein gave us the theory of relativity. Fast forwarding our time travel over the next 100 years to 2009, Science brings us complexity theory as illustrated in the publication of Animal Models in Light of Evolution. Co-authored by Drs Greek and Shanks, this seminal book explains critical and up-to-date understanding of the role evolutionary biology plays in medical research, shedding much-needed light on the not merely antiquated but now demonstrably false assumption that animal experiments are able to predict medical responses in humans. To put this even more clearly, animal models in light of evolution demonstrate the most alarming medical fact that all studies measuring the claimed ability of animals to predict human responses expose a failure rate in the region of 69%. This is an objectively verifiable fact and again I invite you to check out our references for yourself. It is important to appreciate that these studies are not anecdotal. There are no studies in the scientific literature, including the often mistakenly cited Olson study, which show evidence to the contrary. Now we have arrived in the 21st century, let us take a look at medical practice in our hospitals and GP surgeries. Here, tests are accepted as predictive for human patients only if they are reliable in the region of at least 90%. This is well illustrated when medicines have been withdrawn after side effects in even only 1% of a million patients, or when we reasonably expect the results from our blood test or x-ray to be accurate in the region of at least 90%. 
in order to diagnose any illness we may have. Member of Parliament for Newport West, Paul Flynn, has tabled an historic early day motion, EDM for short, to draw these medical facts to the attention of all MPs and their constituents. The EDM calls for those who still dispute its now known statistics to agree to properly moderated public scientific debates with the experts who supply the EDM's evidence. As scientists, these experts do not hold an ethical position about the suffering of laboratory animals and indeed they support the majority of ways animals are used in science. They hold seven out of the nine accepted main uses of animals as scientifically viable. That is to say, as falling outside predicting responses for humans. The parliamentary EDM highlights very serious medical concerns for patients such as myself, who depend upon Parliament's decision makers to act with understanding, integrity and honesty. Please take a few moments to read the EDM's text. OK, I may hear you say, statistics are vital in helping policymakers, but let's see some actual life and death examples of animal models failing human medicine. There is certainly not enough space or time to show all the individual cases, but please pause and read the following slide for a few examples. And for further details, please visit the following scientific website that illustrates this evidence. For patients like me with multiple sclerosis, the animal used for models is a rat. But rats do not naturally develop this illness, which is specific to humans. Symptoms have to be artificially induced in rats, which only superficially mimic those experienced by the onset of MS in humans. This is a deeply disappointing, harmful practice and the evidence shows that it will continue to mislead medical research until it is dropped. It is not that current animal models need to be gradually replaced, they need to be abandoned without further delay, on grounds of their known failure. In light of complexity theory and the evidence best illustrated by animal models in light of evolution, this is pretty serious stuff, you may say. Yes, it is. It is about the very lives of individuals, finding cures for people such as myself. 
scientific knowledge has now reached a point where the questions we are asking are highly complex and mean that the differences between species outweigh the similarities. With advances in technology, we are able to study human disease at the genetic level, and this is precisely where species differences are the most pronounced. The causes of most human disease lie in the proteins the body makes, their regulation and how these proteins interact. Gene expression is responsible for all of these interactions. With systems as complex as humans and non-humans, we now know that very subtle differences may result in completely varied responses to drugs and diseases. A gene can be removed from members of some species, while members of another would die without it. Some genes cause disease in members of one species, but are harmless to those of another. There is also variation within one given species. Studying genetic variation between humans can convey medical data in ways that animal models cannot. Studying human-based genes will provide us with human-focused knowledge that we need in order to cure our diseases. One may indeed wonder where medicine would be if it had focused on human-based research. On a related note, you may be surprised to hear that pharmaceutical companies acknowledge the failure of animal models in their drug development process and write about this openly in the scientific literature. Here are some of their sample quotes. Please visit our website for more. In closing, I want to talk a little about the exciting fact that science is on the verge of offering personalised medicine. This is medical treatment tailor-made for each individual, personally, and as such is not also prescribed for their mother, father or even twin. This most welcome progress is in stark contrast to medical treatments for patients such as myself, which have been tested on non-human animals. If a woman suffers from breast cancer today, her physician will look at her genetic makeup and then determine which treatments are best. This factors in the genetic makeup of the woman and the genetic makeup of the cancer. Two sisters that have identical cancers may have different treatments because of subtle genetic differences. Examples like this could be expanded if society stopped funding research with animals and instead funded human-based research. Last, but by no means least, when scientists make their medical research grant applications, they can be put under great pressure by their sponsors and the press to infer human benefit as the main and most valuable result. Please pause and read the following slide where senior cancer investigator Dr Jim Woodgett comments on this issue following an article in Nature Science Journal, April 2012.
When it is humans that science is trying to help, researchers need to study diseases and drug reactions using valid methods which have a proven track record of success. There is no medical point appealing to the whole living complex system of a mouse just because it is a whole living complex system. Vital differences between species must be recognised and respected as such. After all, humans do not visit the veterinary clinic when they fall ill. I would like to leave you with my final slide, listing some examples of the many valid research methods that are providing scientists with the answers they need in the search for treatments and cures for human disease. Thank you for watching my presentation. For further details, please visit our website where an FAQs book about the use of animals in science, specially written for the non-scientists, is available.